Nowadays, it seems that everybody in the world and their wife have got a GoPro camera, whether they're filming family events, um, doing it professionally or filming extreme sports or using a drone to film aerial photography or videography. Um, just seems that everyone's got a GoPro, but not everybody know how to you, knows how to use the GoPro Studio, the free software that comes with the camera. Now, if you haven't loaded this yet, or if you, even if you haven't got a GoPro, but you still use video, I'd recommend getting this software because it's free and there's a couple of really, really good features in it. So I'm just going to run you through how the software works now. Um, so if you do film in a certain cam with a certain camera that isn't a GoPro, bear in mind that you have to convert the video to an MP4 file um, before importing it into the GoPro Studio because that's what it takes. If you've got a GoPro camera, you can just import the native video that you filmed with the GoPro and it will accept it that way. But if we start with the um, the main features, you've got view and trim here, you've got three steps. View and trim, edit, then export. It's as simple as that. You get your video, you import your video here. So we'll do that now. And I'm going to import a fairly small aerial clip. Uh, this one here is half a gigabyte. It's the end of a uh, of clip when I was doing some aerial work in Dorset, um, just playing around on uh, Maiden Castle. So if I load that now, um, it's a fairly small clip, so it's good for review purposes, but um, and it'll take less time to actually render. So the software will now load that video clip, and I can show you exactly what it is. Um, it's here, it's top of Maiden Castle, um, and you can see it's a fairly bland scene, but if we scrub through it, and if I go through to near the end, you can see, first of all, we've got this Boeing. So, you know, if you've got anything up to a GoPro 4, any of the GoPros, maybe GoPro 5 will get rid of this kind of um, Boeing in the footage, but if you've got one of those cameras, then you're likely to get this kind of um, Boeing in in the footage when you're at a certain angle. If you're if you keep the horizon dead center, then you won't have uh, such a bad effect. You can see there if the horizon's central, then you've got a dead straight line going across. But as soon as you tilt the camera down, that horizon's going to start bending. So it can be a problem for footage. It looks kind of unprofessional if you just render it out like that. Uh, the other alternative to actually get rid of that is to go into some professional software and start really messing about. But this software does it for you. I'll come to that in a sec. Okay, so first of all, all you do is edit the footage, so um, we can now trim it using these two uh, mark in and mark out sections here. So if you don't want the, the beginning bit of footage in here, you can just uh, mark in. Um, so let's say I want to start this video when it turns around, when the camera turns around to, to face me and my buddy there. And I'm going to mark in there. And then at the end, the inevitable footage, if you've got a GoPro, you've probably seen this a thousand times where you're looking at the camera to see if it stopped filming or if it's still filming and you get a gormless shot like that. So I'm going to edit out that just for the sake of the video to about there and then do the mark out there. So any work I'm going to do now is just going to have the, the bits within the mark in and mark out uh, sections. The rest of it will be clipped. Okay, now very simple. You can either remove the clip, clear all the clips. You can have multiple clips there, um, but for the sake of this, we're just going to use one. Um, if you're filming with a GoPro upside down, if you're doing um, various aerial stuff, if you're using a gimbal and the camera's upside down for any reason, you can very quickly rotate the footage just by using that, that key down here. Um, may not be necessary in most cases because most of you will probably just film with the camera upright, but there are instances where using certain accessories where you're going to have the camera upside down. Um, um, and obviously then you can rotate it and also the GoPros the later ones actually have the ability to do this within camera so you know the, your choices are um, there whether you do it in software or in camera so that's just a handy little thing if you do film upside down the thing we're interested in is I'll come to that advanced settings in a second you need to either keep the the file name the same as the footage you shot or you can change it to whatever you want so we can call it you know filming with the sheep or whatever uh, and then you it's important to actually save it to a certain place so I'm gonna change that directory and I'm gonna make a new folder in my C drive called test video go pro studio that's what the software is and we'll put the folder of the file into there click OK Okay, so now it's important to save that file to there. And, and at the moment, I would say save it to your the main hard drive on your computer. If you're using external hard drives, it can be a bit longer to render. Um, in fact, if you've got two external hard drives, then you're better off actually rendering the video to your secondary hard drive where your software isn't based. So C drive is where most of your software will be uh, stored. If you've got a secondary hard drive, then save the file to there. And having two internal hard drives is brilliant because you're going to have a lot less buffering and it'll be a lot quicker to render. OK, so just pick where you're going to save it to. And then we're going to go into advanced settings here. This is where the sort of fun begins. I shot this in 4K video. 
um, so I can choose to either work on this in its native size or I can change it to any one of these settings down to HD or whatever for now I'm gonna actually keep the source <clears throat> and the good reason or the good point about shooting in 4k even if you're gonna render out in 10k uh, 1080p is because when you do this cropping you actually lose a bit of resolution because you you have to crop in the image after you've actually adjusted so if you're shooting in 4k you won't actually lose anything so it's, it's brilliant so film in 4k keep it in 4k for now um, the source frame rate is actually 29.9 I was shooting at 30p for whatever reason um, so I, I'm gonna keep it at that as well not gonna worry about speed up at the moment I'm gonna save it as an AVI file you can do it as a movie or AVR which whichever you prefer always keep the quality high um, you know even if you're rendering out for, for web use you can do that later on um, through other software but I, I like to keep the quality high this is the important setting remove fisheye if that's unchecked your footage when you um, put it into edit at the moment or on the next stage will actually keep that bowing so if we click remove fisheye it does a brilliant job of actually getting rid of that uh, and then you can remember the settings so if you if you keep the same settings in your camera for most of your shoots remember the settings here and it's very straightforward you can just click OK every time and it will go through now once you've done that so we've actually imported the footage we've corrected it so it's going to correct that bowing and we're going to save it to a new folder all you need to do then is add to the conversion list using that big button there and it will add it over here to the conversion list and once that's loaded we can actually have a look at the conversion details down here which will show you the before and after of, of actually what's going to happen so if we open the conversion details down here you can see the original file was that frame size that frame rate the outputs going to be exactly the same uh, it's not going to be flipped and it's going to be high quality so that's pretty much it then all you need to do is click convert all and it will start up here you can see it's going to start processing that into an AVI file from an mp4 and it's going to correct that kind of bowing so once that's finished I'll come back and we'll, we'll have another look okay so that's complete you can see up here it comes up with the word complete when it's done now even though this is only a 1 minute 16 video clip it's actually it took a couple of minutes to do so you imagine if you've got a half an hour clip it's going to take a long time to do that so just bear that in mind and this is a fairly powerful computer as well you can see there what we've ended up with is an AVI file um, and also bear in mind the size this was originally a half a gigabyte 589 megabyte file and now because we've recorded it at high quality and as um, 4k video we've actually now got a 3.83 gigabyte file now that's way too big to sort of upload anywhere um, so really you, you'd need to work on it and downsize it um, output it again as an mp4 file for, for YouTube or as a as like we're gonna do as a 1080p file if I click on that you can see now it started straight away there wasn't any of the bits at the beginning started straight away as it came round to us um, and I'm just gonna double click that so you can see the footage and we've lost all of that all of the banding uh, it's not video, 100%. so you can see we've, the, the horizon now is straight and as we bring it down to the ground the horizon stays straight look at that so we've completely lost that that kind of bowing in the middle It's dead straight along which is absolutely fantastic so the software does it really quickly and it does a really good job of actually correcting that but you do end up with a big file but at the moment this is 4k but if we can bring this over again and get rid of this you can see down here it's 4k so it's 3840 by 2160 but the actual video file is fairly small at the moment um, the actual one you can view because it still needs to be actually output so this is like a test file for you to watch before you've actually output it so I wouldn't recommend using this at this stage it's just a sort of temporary fold, uh, file so now that we've done that we need to proceed to step two and here you actually get to choose the template you can use any of these templates play about with those I tend not to use them I use my own software for, for doing edits so I'm going to use a blank template click create and that will now add this into the edit part so if we now click this and drag it down we've now got the the file within the edit section now you can scrub along here and check the footage out do everything you like you've got the sound there um, this is where you can do all of your decent editing you can if you look up here you can add more media so you can add music if you look down on the timeline it says drag title here drag audio here so you can actually add your own music add your own titles it's kind of basic as an editing software suite but it's actually still very powerful um, so it's fairly basic on what you can do obviously you can trim cut uh, you can split the footage you can have more in and out markers um, and then over here is where the fun starts with um, with various bits and pieces uh, you've got lots of things you can do now 
this is what I'll come to in another video I'm going to do another tutorial for this because it's quite important and quite good you can actually change the speed of the footage you can either speed it up or slow it down and it's amazing if you've heard of a foot um, a software title called Twixter which is about three hundred and fifty dollars as a standalone product this does it the same thing pretty much for free and I'll come to that in the other video but make sure you watch that video because it is really really cool um, but of other things you've got you can fade in and fade out the footage so we can just add a, a couple of seconds fade in and then a bit fade out so when we start the footage now you can see it just fades in gently you can have a, as long as short a fade as you want uh, you can change the audio levels you can fade the audio in and out as well so we may as well do that and then when you start again now if we play that back to the beginning when you play the audio fades in with the with the actual um, dark background then you can change the color temperature etc etc You've got you can change the exposure, contrast, saturation, sharpness, and keyframes, uh, and then you've got basic zooming, horizontal. You've got all these different things you can do with the software, but generally you're not going to do a lot of that because down here, if you've shot in ProTune, this is where where the software again comes in. I would always recommend shooting in ProTune with the GoPro because this, as you see on the screen now, is the natural shot that comes out of um, the GoPro. And then if we click on ProTune, you can see it adds sharpness, contrast, color saturation. The footage ends up looking absolutely superb. You have got other things down here. You can have vignettes on. You can have a kind of hot day effect from the 70s. Uh, GoPro red indoors, GoPro indoors yellow. Uh, you can have a beach kind of look. Let's get rid of the vignette. Day for night, uh, candy color, all these kind of things. Um, but generally, again, I just like to use the ProTune because it gives a really kind of good footage. And if we play that through now, you can see it's really great footage. We lost the bowing, lost the banding, got a lovely sharp image, all looking really good. So now what you need to do, um, once you've added titles and things like that, um, then you can output it. Now, I don't tend to do a lot of my editing in here, so I don't generally add titles and audio. What I do is output um, to an MP4 file, then load that into other editing software, either Sony Vegas Pro or Premiere Pro from Adobe. So all you need to do next is export the file and you get lots of options. You can uh, export it purely for YouTube straight away and it gives you the frame size so it's going straight out as a um, as a 4K file and it's 45 um, megabits per second. That's a huge bit rate. Um, so you can end up with a, a fairly large file but not too bad. You can see there it was a three and a half gigabyte file. It's now down to 422. If we want to just output it as a standard 4K, um, again, it's going to be the same same as YouTube. But let's have a look at the HD 120. If we output it as a HD file, standard HD file, MP4, then it's going to go right down to 207 megabytes, which is pretty good. So we may as well do that. Um, we're going to seriously reduce the file size. So it's going to take up less hard drive space. Um, but like I say, if you want to output it at 4K or YouTube, then obviously do that. Vimeo is fantastic. I love Vimeo accounts, they're absolutely brilliant, so you can output a really good file there. Or you can go custom and you can change the bitrate yourself, anything up to 50. Um, and you can play about with the, the, the file format, so the MP4 AVI movie. Or you can go with frame size, keep it as the original source 4K file. Change the bitrate, and as you change the bitrate, you can see the, the file size down here changes as well. So really, if you're shooting in 4K, the, the higher the bitrate, the better the quality it's going to be. So if we change this down to a 1080 file, and 40 um, megabits per second bit rate. We've got a 376 megabit, uh, megabytes file, which is okay. Um, in fact, that may be a bit higher. Let's bring that down to about 30. Um, and that's pretty much it. All you need to do is then is export it to your video file. So we've got an MP4 file going out as a 1080p um, high definition video clip. Same frame rate as we filmed that and a, a 30 megabits per second um, bit rate. So then we just export it and we're going to find the folder that we've actually used so if we go into Windows and find the test video and we're just going to call it test just to just for the purposes of this but normally you'd match it with the file that you've already made um, over here the AVI file so if we now just click save it will start rendering that out as an mp4 file and once it's done that it's pretty quick once it's done that I'll show you the actual finished clip Okay, so that's now done, took about a minute, um, and we've got the two files here, so if I change this to actually show you the file sizes, we go into details, you can see that obviously the original file we had from the GoPro camera itself was 589 megabytes, the AVR file that we threw out was 4 gigabytes, huge, and now the test file, the actual finished file, which is um, about the same length, we only trimmed it a little bit, and we've output it as a HD file. 1080p it's now only 278 megabytes so if we just click play on that you can
can see now we've got a lovely HD file, put it at 100%. We've got a really nice file. Um, again, all the bowing and banding's gone. We've got a lovely smooth footage. Sharp, good contrast, absolutely spot on. So, and again, if we bring this down to when it lands, again, lovely straight horizon, really sharp pictures. You can see the grass there, you can see every single blade, lovely colours and everything, and there's another drone in the sky there, look. So, it's absolutely brilliant. I think this software is superb. Like I say, it's free with GoPro. You can download it from their site. Um, and there's so many features to it, especially if you're shooting ProTune, you get some really good kind of footage. But the other thing I will show you, like I said again, is the in another video, I'll show you how to slow down footage and get a really, really cool look to your shots. But that's it for GoPro Studio. I'd recommend if you've got a GoPro camera, run everything through here. It will make your videos really superb.